Shalom friends, Rabbi Jacques Kugirkon here, thinking about the fact that in our world, especially now that it looks like the economy is rebounding, we seem to be increasingly wealthier in material things, and yet poorer in spiritual matters. Sometimes, maybe even they go together, I don't know. But this week, Parsha, in Emor, we read something quite interesting. It made me think of it. In Leviticus 23, 4, we read, These are the appointed seasons of the Lord. Eile Moadei Adonai. And there will be a big description of what goes on. This means that these seasons are times that God has fixed for Israel. Festive days that God, even God himself, herself, eagerly anticipates because if observed properly, you know, its proper spirit and way and manner, will help God's people grow in purity, in holiness, go closer to God. Had, however, this Sabbath, these festivals, been given only for the enjoyment uh, and pleasure of human beings, rather than as God as a partner, the Torah would have said, these are your appointed seasons. But rather it says, these are the appointed seasons of the Lord. So, therefore, if God sees, traditionally, that if we squander the Sabbath, the Holy Sabbath, we squander the opportunities that the, the festivals provide us with just idle pleasure or playing and or not observing it at all, God will exclaim in anger, according to our tradition, what we read in Isaiah 1.14, Your new moons and your appointed seasons are hateful to my soul. They are a burden to me. I am weary to bear them. That's evidently when people are observing this Sabbath, the, the holidays, you know, when, when going to temple for Rosh Hashanah, for Yom Kippur, is a fashion statement more than a quest for the soul. Famous Dubner Magid, known for telling parables, would tell a parable to explain this, what seems on the surface in our tradition, to be a lack of consistency. How can this be the season of, of God, and yet they are hateful? So he tells you, there was a rich man with several children who were afflicted with an unknown illness. A baffling, nobody knew what it was. Since money was no subject, the father sought out the best doctor, hired him to work exclusively for him, to come live in his house, to research and use all his knowledge and all his skill to try to find a solution for this, uh, this disease. Eventually, after much effort and much research, the doctor was able to devise a new remedy which brought like a miraculous little improvement, like a, like a miracle, with, for the little kids. Naturally, the happy father did everything in his power to show how grateful he was, how much he admired the doctor for his skill to having saved his children. Unfortunately, the happy state, this improvement didn't last, did not last long. Then, some, after some time, the children were taken ill again, very seriously. And again, the doctor, after much research and thinking and trying, managed to find a drug to ease their suffering. The only trouble was that this time the children refused to take the medicine and their condition was growing steadily worse. Children's father went about downcast, depressed, and whenever he happened to see the doctor around the house, he would glare at him in ill-concealed wrath. One day, the physician could take it no longer, and he couldn't restrain himself, and he asked 
his employer. Why should you be angry with me? It's my fault that your children refuse to take the medicine that could cure them? The worried father replied, Doctor, it isn't really that I'm angry with you. It is just every time I see you, I have, I have to think how stupid, how, how silly, how absurd all this is. If there was no doctor and no, no medicine that could help my children, then I guess I'll have to be happy just that they are not getting worse. But in this case, I have you living right here in my house. And, and when I think of the wonderful things you have done, the wonderful medicine you have prepared that, that could help my children so much, if only they would obey me and take it, the frustration and the exasperation. I feel is almost more than I can bear. That comes to explain God's verse, you know, verse in Isaiah. Let Israel, us, also, let us all remember this parable. We are children of God, and the Sabbath is the healer that can restore our spirit. If only we use it and keep it properly, in its proper spirit, in its proper way. Instead, so many of us, like stubborn children who refuse to accept the one remedy that could help us. We waste our Shabbat with foolish play, golf maybe, and therefore other things. And therefore, God is angry and God cries out that Israel's Sabbath and holidays are a burden and that God is weary of them. Actually, it's not the Sabbath that has angered God. But whenever God thinks of our Sabbath, the way we observe them, God remembers our stubborn refusal to accept the healing and the wholeness that it could bring to us. The, the wrath that overtakes God when God sees our stupidity is vented, first of all, on the innocent Sabbath that we have failed to keep. Don't waste this Shabbat. Join us at Temple Israel. Friday is at 6 o'clock. We're looking forward to seeing you. Shabbat Shalom.